Hi everybody, welcome back to Cabin Crafts. Um, I'm on my own today, so uh, please pardon the reaching of turning on and off my phone. But I wanted to talk to you today about pins. I got a lot of questions uh, last week when Justine and I did uh, the um, short gown and people were asking, how did you keep it closed? How did you keep it closed? And so what I wanted to show you today is this is how we keep our garments closed. This is a straight pin. And it's interesting about history. You know, you look at some of these little tiny things and I did a little research about pins and wow. So even pins have an interesting history. So back in colonial America, uh, all of the pins were made by hand and they were imported from Great Britain. So we did not have uh, a lot of pins in the colonies. They, there was a couple places that tried to make them, but as you can imagine, the, the demand far outweighed the, the uh, supply. So I looked into the history of pins and it's interesting. I've got an excerpt from a letter from Abigail Adams to John Adams. This was in June of 1775. So this is a year before we declared independence. And so this probably would have been around the first Continental Congress. She wrote uh, John a long letter and she said at the end, I have a much more importance to me. It is that you would send out Mr. Bass and purchase me a bundle of pins and put in your trunk for me. The cry for pins is so great that what we used to buy for 7.6 are now 20 shillings and not to be had for that. A bundle contains 6,000 for which I used to give a dollar. But if you can procure for them for 50 shillings or three pound, pray let me have them. Mr. Welch, who carries this to headquarters, wait, waits, which prevents my adding more than that I am with the tenderest regard. In other words, there was somebody waiting for her to finish this letter so he could take it to headquarters and send it with General Washington's correspondence. Because um, at that time, the, uh, the British were intercepting our mail and were checking the letters for any kind of details about where... Uh, powder guns anything was hiding so she was actually writing the letter at that time and it was going to go to one of Washington's um, uh, adjutants to take with the regular correspondence to the Continental Congress and so she knew it would be safe with Washington's letters so anyway she was needing pins and like I said they were handmade and in order to get that head what they used to do, so this was made from, from wire. This was made from wire. And they could either be made of brass or steel. Now, the ladies liked the steel because it, the points were sharper, the, but the brass didn't rust. And so to get the little head on there, let's see the little head. To get the head on there, they had to wrap a coil of wire around the pin and then flatten it. And that's how they got ahead so that it wouldn't, you know, go through your material. So a lot of ladies wear was closed with pins and drawstrings. So on my gown, I got a pin right here. So in my last video with Justine, you'll notice I said, ouch, I stuck myself. That's because my top is all pinned. And then that holds it together. And then when you put your apron on, so I've only got two pins in this top. And then with my apron, it holds it all together, uh, holds it, you know, closed. So that is how we close our clothing. And I looked into the history of, of buttons because I'm like, well, men had buttons on their 18th century clothing. They had their um, waistcoats or waistcoats. Uh, they, they had the fall front breeches, which had lots of buttons on them. They had buttons at the knee. Um, and they had a lot of buttons on their clothing. But mostly women's clothing was closed with pins and uh buttons would have been very expensive to make too they they had a shank on the bottom they weren't drilling the holes in them and then on a lot of the well-to-do ladies clothing you'll notice that it matches the material of their gowns so they covered the head of the button with the same fabric as what they were wearing so it could get very costly so well-to-do ladies had buttons on some of their clothing but the majority of middle class uh, trading class, merchant class, colonial Americans were closing their clothes with pins. So that's a little bit about pins and how we close our, clo close our clothes. <laughs> that's hard to say all at one time. Um, 
And then on the doll quilt video, um, that generated a lot of uh, comments, as you can well imagine. And if you didn't watch it, uh, uh, I talked about, um, how do I want to say this? With the current crisis that's going on in America over Bud Light and Target and these things, I was talking about um, protecting our children from this ideology that seems to be perme permeating the culture of the world right now. And I, for those of you that are watching this for the first time, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of that fact. Uh, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And I don't think that the Bible, uh, I mean, it can defend itself. All you got to do is read it. And so I had a person um, write some very negative comments. And I expected that, to be honest with y'all. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. And so, but here's where I stand. Um, if you don't like what I'm about to say, or when I say I have a sermon at the end of my video, just turn it off. Uh, I don't have time to argue with people who want to argue just for argument's sake. Uh, I stand on the Word of God. I believe the Word of God is infallible, Holy Spirit inspired, and right in every way. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I am not going to get on video and just argue with people. The second thing I said is that I absolutely love everyone, and I really do. And I even have family members that are struggling with this issue. And I love them dearly. Um, but I just, I think it's wrong because the Bible says it's wrong. And if the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. And what was wrong 2,000 years ago is still wrong today. Like I said, God does not change his mind about culture and, and to go with society's norms. So this is what came to me in this man's um comment and I deleted the comment. I didn't even answer him because I'm like, I'm just not, I'm not, argue, not going to argue with you. And he put it up again. So I literally blocked him from the channel and that's what I will do. You don't have to watch me. You don't have to agree with me. I don't hate you. I'm, uh, but I am not going to argue and waste my time with people who just want to argue um, about the Bible. It is sharper than a two edged sword. It's its own weapon. Uh, so this is what he said to me. And this is probably the most misquoted scripture in all of the Bible. And it's really the favorite of non-believers and even some believers. Um, Matthew 7, 1 through 3. This is the King James Version. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Now, this is at the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and he was dealing with a lot of hypocrites in the Pharisee circle. And the Pharisees were constantly going around judging people, uh, being very self-righteous, being very uh, judgmental and critical of everyone that was not like them, Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. He's like, you're, you're clean on the outside, but you're dead bones on the inside. You're like a grave, okay? And so that is not what this scripture means. We have to make judgments every day about things. And what the Bible says is right and wrong. We have to judge based on scripture. So this has been taken totally out of context for years by people. And what it really means is we are not a judge. A judge can condemn and sentence people. We cannot sentence anyone uh, in the Bible. God is the ultimate judge, but that doesn't mean that you don't call sin a sin, and that's what I did. Um, it's also a sin to steal. It's also a sin to murder. It's also a sin to be jealous um, and idolatrous and adultery. I mean, it's a, there's many things that are a sin, and you can preach about that and you're not being judgmental. I'm not calling someone out and saying to this specific individual person, well, I don't do this, but you do this. That is what they're talking about, a critical judgmental spirit while you yourself are not perfect. The only person that is perfect that ever walked this earth was Jesus Christ. But this is the this is the scripture that people like to conveniently go to whenever you call out sin, and it's not right. It, we have to judge every day. We make judgments about the weather. 
We look at our weather on our phones and we're like, oh, it's going to rain today. I'm going to carry an umbrella. That's a judgment. You made a judgment based on the weather. Uh, you make a judgment based on what's in your cupboard, what to prepare for food. Well, I have this tonight. I think I will cook this. That's actually a judgment you made based on what you had in your cupboard. So it doesn't mean it's not a free ride to immorality, which is what a lot of people want to use it for, uh, is to just say, well, you, you can't judge. This is the thing. I love these people. I really, really do. I, I, I pray for them. I feel sorry for them because I feel like a lot of them are in confusion. And you get called names. You get called homophobe, transphobe, you know, all these phobes. Guess what? The last time I looked, phobia meant a fear of something. If you're, um, if you're claustrophobic, you can't stand to be in tight spaces. Okay, so uh, there's other fears. Fear of water, fear of heights, fear of all these different things. That's a phobia, okay, to the point to where you don't even want to go outside your door. So I'm not afraid of transgender people. I'm not afraid of homosexuals. I'm not afraid of lesbians and, and, and whatever you want to call yourself today. I'm not afraid of it, but I am calling it out as wrong according to scripture. And that is not being judgmental because at the same time, I don't hate that person. I love that person. I have a business. I have people come in my store that it is blatantly obvious what they are. And I treat them with the same kindness that I would any other customer who comes in my store. So don't call me a phobe and don't call me uh, judgmental because I treat them with respect and kindness. What they're doing, I think is wrong, but that is based on scripture. Scripture completely says, absolutely, without a doubt, that it is wrong for a man to love a man in a sexual way and a woman to love a woman in a sexual way. And God certainly didn't create us to change our bodies. And just because you've changed your parts does not mean you've changed your DNA and your chromosomes. You were born with those. And so taking all of these extra hormones and whatever, that is man-made, okay? And it's still, you can put all of the female parts on a woman that you want or on a man, and they're not going to have a baby. Okay, so that's where I stand on that. Again, I'm not saying this hateful, but because that, that gentleman wrote uh, really hateful things to me, um, I'm explaining this, and like I said, if you don't like it, turn me off, because I'm not going to back down. I'm asking the Lord to give me more and more courage. This is not easy to do in this day and age. People, you will be attacked. And as you all have seen in some of my earlier videos, um, I actually take, you know, I put a lot of stock in words. Words is one of my love languages. And so um, words hurt. And I'm not trying to hurt anyone with words, but the Bible is, like it says, sharper than a two-edged sword and a sword cuts. And it's truth. And some people don't want to hear the truth. And it's easy to say, I don't believe in God, or I don't believe in the Bible. And I think people do that because if you don't, then you're not accountable to that God and that Bible. And that gives them an excuse and convenience for them to live the lifestyle that they want to live. But I will continue to teach truth, um, both in history and in, uh, in, in biblical uh, precepts. So if, like I said, if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. You can turn me off. You can stop it after the craft, but I will not back down. I will stand on the word of God. And I appreciate all of you that watch and, and your kind comments, but just be on warning that if you want to argue, I'm not going to argue. I don't need to. I don't have to. Like I said, the Bible speaks for itself. All you got to do is read it. And, um, and if you read it with an open heart, uh, and you're doing something wrong, it will convict you. It happens to me all the time. I will read God's word and I will be like, oh, gosh, Candy, you really messed up there. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Uh, but, and I sin. We all sin. Paul said we sin daily. And because we're human and we were put on this earth and we were born into sin. And so because of Jesus Christ, he bridged that gap between us and God, that, that gulf of sin. And so if these videos reach one person um, with the message of Christ, 
then I feel like it was worth it all. So I love you all. I really, really do. Um, and in light of all of this stuff that's going on with, with these big stores, uh, these are really, really tough times for small businesses. I would encourage you to, in your town, I'm sure there's lovely little shops and boutiques. And the next time you need a, a birthday present or a gift for someone, go shop your local shops um, instead of going to these big box stores and, and buying things from people that don't respect your values. And uh, I mean, just like the opposition wants to, uh, wants to uh, you know, if we put a big display in the front of Target that was full of Bibles and Christian literature, oh my gosh, uh, what a backlash that would cause. But, it, it, you know, it's always okay when the other side does it, but when Christians speak up and stand up for what they believe in, we're wrong, we're phobes, we're bigots, we're haters. Um, I, I've never seen so much intolerance in the other side in my life. They always scream tolerate, tolerate, but they don't tolerate me. They don't tolerate you. So, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, uh, that tit for tat but what i'm saying is your dollar is speaking spend your dollar in places that uh hold your values and beliefs just like they do and uh shop small shop in your community and buy from some of these small businesses it's very hard right now for small business so um that's all i'm going to say i could go on and on and on and on and on and i'm not going to but uh thank you all for watching and uh, the next video I put up, I hope I might have to do it alone. I wanted to do a housewife. This is a housewife. And I'll explain that in another video. And then uh, this is a pocket. And I'll probably sell kits for these uh, once we do the video. And you can buy the historic fabric and, and have everything you need to make a pocket or a housewife. And so that's all I got to say. God bless you all. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day. Bye.